Footsteps in the snow, the oldest solved cold case, and how it went unsolved once again. It was December the 3rd, 1957, when seven-year-old Maria Redolph went missing on a street corner in Sycamore, Illinois, and five months later, Maria's remains were found 100 miles from Sycamore in Woodbine, Illinois. It wouldn't be until more than 50 years later that the case had what was initially thought of as closure this turned out to be false closure. The case appeared solved in September 2012 when the police would convict the murderer for the abduction and murder of Maria. This would then be overturned in March 2016 and Maria's neighbour Jack McCulloch would be declared an innocent man in April 2017. To date the murder remains unsolved and the mystery of Maria Rudolph continues to baffle the Chicago area. It will more than likely forever be a cold case. Seven-year-old Maria Rudolph was playing with best friend Kathy on the first snowfall of the year when a mysterious man offered Maria a piggyback ride. Maria's friend Kathy was the last to see Maria Rudolph alive. The last that Kathy saw of Maria was a strange man hoisted her on his back and trotting off down the street. Kathy had gone inside to get some gloves to fight against the harsh cold, and when she came back out on the street, both the man and Maria were gone. All that Kathy looked down upon were footsteps in the snow. And while Kathy was elated some 54 years later at the news that the man was finally apprehended, she must now continue with the inner torment that she watched someone in plain sight take away her best friend. At the time of the abduction, the sun was setting. It was near dark and the two girls were playing duck the cars. The time was 6.30 p.m. The man told the little girls that his name was Johnny. According to Kathy, Johnny was 24 and not married. Kathy stated that Johnny had blonde hair, bad teeth and a high-pitched voice. Who was Johnny? Going back to a time before Amber alerts and faces on the back of milk cartons, the search for Maria had garnered national attention. There were various public appeals from the Rudolph family and widespread investigations across Illinois which included all known sex offenders, transients and another man that had previously offered other children piggyback rides. Maria's remains were found by mushroom picking tourists about half a year later. Her body was so badly decomposed that her parents could only identify her by the colour of her brown socks. It wasn't until 50 years later that an autopsy could determine the cause of death. Maria was stabbed in the throat various times. John Tessier was at the top of the suspect list from the beginning of Maria's disappearance. A neighbour of the Rudolph family, one of seven children, John was considered an outsider and had been described as creepy by the community. In 1957, Tessie had passed a lie detector test and the file was closed with the report noting, no further investigation is being conducted regarding the above suspect. At the time, the police did not have a school book photograph and therefore Kathy was not asked to identify John Tessier. John was born in Northern Ireland in 1939 to a British sergeant. John moved to the USA at the age of seven and grew up in Illinois. Between the Maria case, John lived a fairly quiet life, serving in the military for 13 years where he rose to the rank of captain. He was also a police officer and worked in security. It was in 1982 when John first fell foul of the law when he was charged with statutory rape which was later downgraded into a misdemeanor. In 1994, John Tessier changed his name to Jack McCulloch, apparently a tribute to his deceased mother. The case was actually reopened as a result of John's own mother, who believed John to be guilty. Eileen Tessier said in 1994, while on her deathbed, that John had killed a number of little girls and asked John's half-sister Janet to tell someone. 
Another of John's sisters, Mary, confirmed that she had heard her mother say, he did it. John, however, had a fragmented and broken relationship with his mother, which includes incidents of threatening and violent behaviour from the mother, and John had chosen not to attend her funeral when she died. There is every possibility that the confession was made by John's mother out of either spite or in a drug-induced delirium. Janet, in the meantime, had made multiple attempts to get law enforcement to investigate her own half-brother, constantly contacting state police to look into John. It wasn't until 2008, when Janet sent a lengthy email to the Illinois State Police, that they decided to reopen the case. State police reviewed the evidence and found testimony from neighbours of John's. John's behaviour was seemingly erratic and strange, especially around young girls. There were also anecdotes of John giving young girls piggybacks in the area, including refusing to put one girl down after he'd picked her up. In 2012, they reopened the case. Everything seemed to go against John, when Kathy personally picked out John from a picture in a lineup and said, that's the man. Despite all of this, John had a strong alibi. John Tessier was enlisted in the United States Air Force in Bockford, Illinois, day in question. It was confirmed by recruitment officers that they had spoken with John at the time. A collect call was traced in Watford, Illinois, which was 40 miles away from the abduction site, and an unused train ticket to Watford was found in John's possessions. The timeline recommended by state investigators did not add up. It suggested that Tessier kidnapped Maria and then drove to Rockford in time to make a call at 6.57pm and meet the same recruiting officer at 7.15pm. Under this timeline, it was determined that Maria was kidnapped at 6.20pm, but it does not explain the train ticket. With different inmates testifying that John had discussed killing Maria to them, with two different accounts of the cause of death, neither similar to Maria's actual death, with the details of John's alibi withheld during trial, it seemed that John Tessier was doomed. John was convicted by a jury for the abduction and murder of Maria and given a life sentence. He was sentenced to 73 years old, so he was set to die in prison as a guilty man. When the state's attorney reviewed the evidence extensively, he discovered that for Tessia to kill Maria was impossible. This included reviewing the collect call and the distance from Rockford to Sycamore. In April 2016, the murder charge was dismissed without prejudice, and on the 12th of April 2017, John Tessier was officially declared an innocent man and released from prison. The Maria Redolf murder had gone from unsolved to cold to solved and back to unsolved. And now we remain back at unsolved. And while there was a feeling of tremendous relief for the likes of Kathy, the last witness to see Maria alive, and the remainder of the Redolf family at the conviction of John, there is a large sense of injustice that John Tessier was convicted when all of the evidence seemed to point away from him. Maria Redolph's murder had been the oldest solved case in the USA, and now it is just that, unsolved. Johnny is now living in a retired community where he once worked and is currently in the process of suing law enforcement for the unfair conviction. Another suspect that was under the radar of police was William Henry Redman. Redman was a carny with an ability to make young girls vanish in his presence. There were numerous stories of girls seemingly going missing whenever Redmond was around. This included a 10-year-old in Ohio and an 8-year-old in Pennsylvania. A likely sounding suspect, Redmond is now dead and the evidence appears circumstantial. With very little to go on against Redmond except that he looked like Kathy's description of Johnny and has a suspicious history around children. Redmond could very well have escaped justice. For now, all we know is what we don't know. We don't know who killed Maria Redolph, but we do know that she left footsteps in the snow.